After 15 months of planning, Operation Ailsa Craig was finally launched in the winter of 2020. The thing that dictates this here is the weather, particularly in this time of year. That drives more complexity, so you're looking at making the plan on a daily basis or 24 hours pre you go on the following day. When you look at the overall logistics of moving the granite from the Ailsa Craig 10 miles behind my back here onto a boat with an excavator and a drilling equipment, the challenge is absolutely immense. It was a challenge for sure, but supplies of blue hone granite, which forms the running surface on the stone, were running low on the mainland. And that meant curling stone manufacturer Kay's Curling had to grasp the opportunity. Oh, the blue hone granite is, is priceless. It's, it's effectively a waterproof granite. It's very, very hard wearing, very resistant, and that makes it ideal for being on the ice. The reason we're on Ailsa Craig is it's the only place so far on the planet that there's been any uh, recording of blue hone granite present. So it's pretty unique, this place. There were environmental concerns too. A 52-page planning document produced by Scottish National Heritage had to be adhered to. The island has been rat-free since the 90s, as though there were boat inspections and rat traps set on the island. The potential impact on wildlife had to be assessed, especially the birds and the seals. I think the main concern really is, is um you know, the impact on the seals, particularly because they've got pups at this time, and whether the disturbance levels, the noise levels, the machinery, or whatever it might be, would have an impact on those uh, seals and uh, get to the point where the mothers maybe have to leave the, the pups for, for too long. On previous trips to Ailes or Craig, Kay's curling have harvested the granite from the beach down there and then taken it across the sea to Girvan, but this time they're going to have to get it from that cliff face. It's the blue hone granite that they need, and that's going to involve doing something that they haven't done here for 60 years. A little gunpowder for this lot, not jelly knife, that would shatter the rock, just gentle gunpowder. And now for the stone breaking, an ancient penance for some, but a skilled joy for Jimmy, who knows the texture and grain of the stone, and who fashions 2,000 of these boulders every year. These days, it's a bit more sophisticated. Six metre holes are drilled into the cliffside diagonally beside the cracks, and gas cartridges inserted and fired. It's more of a pop or a thump to lessen the impact on wildlife, who seem, at the most, curious as to what's going on around them. No, we, we're not, it's not an explosive, it's a pyrotechnic, so it doesn't detonate, it deflagrates, which is just high speed burn, produces a lot of gas very quickly, and that gas is what pushes on the rock. A detonation, uh, it will destroy an awful lot of the rock in the, surrounding the, the, the char, and that's not what we want to do here. Then it's the time-consuming task of clearing, selecting the right sizes and gathering up the granite and loading into miniskips. Then on to the landing craft at the Red Baroness to sail to Girvan. Six hundred tonnes of blue hone granite eventually making their way to the mainland over a 14-day period. And all for curlers at all levels around the world. 
I think when people begin to see this and they see what's going on and they see the, the amount of effort, time, uh, and also the amount of um, application by everybody, the dedication of people, I think they'll be amazed to see that you get little little lumps of rock coming off the island of this that turn up in the bottom of a curling stone that's played at the next Olympic Games. I think they'll be well impressed.